When's the last time you gave your phone an IP address? I've never done it, actually. Mine gets one automatically. So does yours. So there's this really awesome technology called DHCP that automatically leases IP addresses out to computers on the network, including your phone. This happens in a home as well. DHCP runs on the router. In a business environment, DHCP runs on dedicated hardware, right? In a, in a server operating system like Windows Server. Uh, what's amazing uh, about DHCP is it makes IT's job so much easier. And it also makes users' jobs much easier because they don't have to worry about giving their IP address <laughs> or statically assigning an IP address every time they go to a new network or come back to work every day or get a new computer. So they just, as soon as they got that connectivity, they'll receive an IP address from DHCP. In this particular exercise, we're going to set up DHCP together. Thus far, we've only really done static IP addressing. And that's not a best practice in a business environment because it's hard to manage. Could you imagine if a business had to assign IP addresses to every computer? If you're a big company uh, with thousands of computers, that would require a whole team to do. So let's go into this. Grab this, uh, go into PC0. Uh, for you, it might be a different number, but we can go to IP configuration. Notice in Packet Tracer, it's automatically set to static or by default set to static. That's not how it is in Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's actually set automatically to automatically receive one or, you know, to receive one from DHCP. Notice when we do DHCP without a server in the network, what happens? It fails and it says a PIPA is being used. A PIPA is automatic private IP addressing. Uh, every operating system, whether it's on your phone or a laptop or desktop computer, uh, it's designed and uh, programmed to automatically give itself an IPv4 address if it doesn't detect a DHCP server on the network. So that's what that process is about. And in the next video, we'll cover that process. But for now, let's worry about configuring DHCP. So I'm going to flip it over to DHCP on this PC as well, just so they're, you know, ready to get one as soon as I've got my, my server in the uh, topology. Go to the end devices, grab your server, drop the server in there, connect your server using a copper straight through. Usually this is a faster connection because servers are, you know, highly sought after devices on a network, so they need faster connections. All right, so let's speed up through that convergence period, right? Go into your server. Now, I know this may sound funny, but servers need static IP addresses. And in the business world and in the business environment, Typically, servers and other critical devices and heavily relied upon devices will have an IP address that's statically assigned. Um, here, here are some other examples. Uh, routers and printers and wireless access points will often have a static IP because so many other devices rely on them. So if an IP address changed, it would throw a bunch of clients off or a bunch of other devices off, right? So we'll go into IP configuration and give it a static IP of 192.168. I'm going to give it dot two, tab down and, you know, let that autofill. We're not going to do a default gateway and DNS server right now. Flip over to the services tab. I want you to think of a service uh, like like you think of a fire department or a restaurant in a neighborhood or in a town. Whereas in a network or a network neighborhood, we have services that are in the form of protocols that deliver some type of um, usability or easy ease of management to clients in a, in a town or neighborhood a service like, a, you know, the fire department puts out fires, right? Or a restaurant feeds us. So the citizens in the town are like the computers on a network. Computers on a network request services and servers deliver those services. In this case, DHCP is our service. So click on the DHCP option. We're going to skip over default gateway and DNS server. Let's start at 10. In most business environments, you're going to have a scope 
of addresses that are, you know, reserved for servers or reserved for routers or reserved for printers, right? And then there'll be a huge block of addresses reserved for uh, PCs, right? So I'm going to save that, make sure those settings stick, and make sure to turn this on. So once this goes on, it's going to respond to any requests, right? And those requests are coming from these PCs or these clients. Let's go to the PCs and test and see if this worked. So I'm going to go static, DHCP. Cool, so I got one. What I just did there when I flipped over to static is I released the address and then I asked for a renewal of my address, right? It's like renewing, you know, a rental that you might have, right? So let's go in. I want to show you how to do this from command prompt as well because we want to be command line wizards, right? So notice we'll do IP config release. That's releasing it. And then let's do a renew. It's going to ask it. It's going to do a discover, right? Cool. Let's go over to command prompt. Do IP config release and renew. Let's ping. I got 10. I think the other one was 12, right? So yeah, I'm getting replies. Remember, I get four replies. So you can see there that DHCP is pretty simple to set up. Uh, Packet Tracer does, you know, have that really simplified configuration, but it's not too much harder in other, other servers uh, like Microsoft Server. It's pretty simple to set up just as long as you understand that concept. In the next video, we're going to look at exactly what happens in the background with DHCP.